without a doubt, the most versatile machine tool is the vertical mill. Mills can be used to flatten, drill, bore, chamfer, profile, and a great many other things. There are a great many kinds of mills. Mini mills, mill drills, side mills, vertical mills. It gets kind of confusing. But for our purposes, we're talking about a class of tools that consists of a vertically mounted motor and spindle, a table which can be moved around with a great deal of precision, and a mount or body which holds everything together. Mills employ small cutters like this, which are confusingly called mills. There are ball end mills, four flute mills, two flute mills, and so on. But mills can also drive big fly cutters, boring bars, involute gear cutters, and other increasingly arcane cutting tools. The mills fit into high precision collets, which mount on the spindle and are capable of making cuts with a very high degree of accuracy. You can also mount drilling chucks onto the spindles of mills and perform conventional drilling operations. Knife makers find particular use for mills when making folding knives. The close tolerances and precision design work involved in locking mechanisms, pivots, and spring assist or switchblade mechanisms almost demand the use of a mill. But figuring out which one to buy is quite a minefield. Here's a survey of the basic types available out there. The smallest mill is the mini mill. As the name implies, it's a bench top item with a very small motor. Mini mills are primarily used by people who make models, model steam engines, model railroads, things like that, but they can also be very useful for knife makers. Sherline and Micromark are well-known specialists in these tools. Next up the ladder in size and cost is the mill drill, a tool which borrows attributes from both the drill press and the full-sized vertical mill. Like the drill press, it has a spindle which can be cranked down for drilling holes. But because it's a mill, it has a stable, high-precision table which can be used to move the work into the cutter. Mill drills will typically have motors in the one horsepower range. On the high end, you'll find the vertical mill, sometimes referred to as a bridge port, the name of the company that introduced the general type back in the 19th century. Bridge ports are fabulous machines which weigh several tons. The bridge port consists of a motor and spindle, a body, and a so-called knee on which the table is mounted. The knee is basically what separates a mill drill from a full-on vertical mill. On a mill drill, you can bring the spindle down like you would on a drill, but you can't move the table up. Because the knee and the table are much more massive, this allows you to cut on the so-called z-axis, the up and down axis, with more precision than does a mill drill. Bridge ports will typically have motors in the one and a half and greater horsepower range. Now, an important consideration if you're buying a used bridge port is that they typically come wired for three phase. Since your house is wired single phase, you'll have to buy what's known as a phase converter, which will run you several hundred bucks and decrease the motor output by about 35%. Because America is in the process of liquidating its industrial base and selling it off to China, bridge ports can be found quite cheaply, by cheaply I mean several thousand dollars, on eBay. New bridge port style vertical mills can run up in the $10,000 range, though there are some Chinese imports that are quite a bit cheaper than that. I personally own a mill drill. It's quite heavy and rigid, and for the low volume one-off type work I do, it's capable of crunching through plenty of material. In fact, the limiting factor on the sort of work I do is invariably on the cutters, not the power of the motor. Mills are one of those tools that once you get one, you wonder how you ever did without. But uh, here's the bad news. You can, and ultimately will, spend more on tooling than on the machine itself. There's an endless supply of things that'll help you get more out of your machine. Clamping systems, cutters, boring attachments, rotary tables, fly cutters, keyway cutters, collets, edge finders, auto feed mechanisms, coolant nozzles and pumps, gauges, sign bars, one, two, three blocks, V blocks, mag... Okay, I could go on all day. Suffice it to say that nobody's given any of these tools away for free. And many of these are not optional. If you don't have a set of R8 collets for your bridge port, for instance, you might as well use the mill for a boat anchor. One particular accessory I should mention is the DRO. These days, virtually nobody uses mills without using a digital readout, 
also known as a DRO, to show the precise location of your tool to within a thousandth or even a ten thousandth of an inch. If you're budgeting for a mill, budget for the DRO. You gotta have it. I can't tell you how much easier a mill is to use when you have a DRO. I know this from hard experience. When I bought mine, I thought, well, I'm no sissy, I can count. Why would I need one of these fancy pants blinking light thingamajigs? Well, let me tell you, I found out very quickly I needed one big time. You can buy them pre-installed and save yourself days and days of very frustrating work. Anyway, love my mill. But don't think you're going to buy one, turn it on, and start cranking out perfect stuff. There's a substantial learning curve and a lot of tooling required. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel and check out my website, waltersailsblades.com, where you'll find the most comprehensive and the complete version of all these cool videos that I've posted here on YouTube.